everybody, it's me, it's Levi, it's back today, and we have another Mariners game to talk about. This one, unfortunately, another one that, you know, we wish we could have gone the other way. The Mariners losing 3-5. to five. I'm Levi, this is the Mariners Fan Cast, brought to you by the NW Sports Cast and the World of Sports Media Network. Here we go. So, um, yeah, another pretty devastating loss, I would say. I mean, it's not devastating, but to lose back-to-back -back games to the Rangers, it's not great. Um... And, yeah, we've kind of been scuffling a bit. The offense hasn't necessarily been there. Um, it makes sense. You know, this this kind of felt like a series that we might lose. Um, it's not the end of the world. The good news is uh, Toronto lost again today. Baltimore lost today. The Rays did win, but we're still uh, a half game ahead of the Rays. We have the number two wild card. Um, we would be playing Toronto right now in the playoffs. We're eight games above 500. So here's what I'm looking for out of the Mariners in the coming week. We got... Three games against the Angels, three games against the A's, and then two games against the Nationals. So the next eight games, that is the most winnable eight games I have ever seen. Now, I said I want the Mariners to win at least six of uh, those 11, so I want us to go five and three during those eight games. If we can go five and three during those eight games, man, my hair is messy today. I just got out of the boat. Excuse me, that. Uh, <laughs> if we can go five and three, in the next eight games between the A's, Angels, and Nationals, I'll be happy. Now, should we probably go six and two? Yeah, we probably should go six and two. Those are, those are three really easy teams. We could easily sweep any of those three teams. Realistically, I think five and three is a really good place to be at. If we go four and four, um, that wouldn't be necessarily the greatest thing ever. This is our time to you know build ground in the wild card hunt, and this is our time to really kind of you know uh, gain some momentum because. Heading into the postseason, we need to have some momentum on our side. If we go five and three through the next eight, then we would be ten games over five hundred, um, and that is a pretty good place to be at. Would be ten games over five hundred, with about thirty to left to go. So I think you know that's probably a pretty good spot. Um, obviously, look at the standings right now. Our record is sixty-two and fifty-four. So if we can go five and three, we'd be sixty-seven and fifty-seven. With that would put us at. 124. So that that put us at 38 games to go. So if we can, if we're 10 over 500 with 38 games to go, I'd be pretty, pretty good in that spot. So let's hope to go five and three in the next eight. Um, but yeah, what what am I looking for really? The pitching staff we've kind of been struggling a bit. The bullpen continues to be elite. Um, although you know I thought it was kind of a weird decision from Scott Service. I'm not really sure what he was doing there, putting in our worst reliever in a tie game on a day that you know felt like a pretty pretty solid game that we could have a decent chance of winning you know it's three to three and instead of putting in Andres Munoz or Paul Sewald or Matt Festa or you know basically anyone who um who has been good this year uh the Mariners ended up putting in Matt Brash which I thought was a kind of a weird decision because Matt Brash ha is is definitely our worst pitcher in the bullpen uh he's our youngest guy uh he may actually be older than Munoz but he's one of our youngest guys with not not very much experience and uh, he definitely has, obviously, the worst numbers right now of anyone. And I know his ERA still is pretty inflated back from when he was a starter. But even out of the bullpen, he has had the worst ERA out of that entire group. So out of anyone you're going to put in in a tie game, the fact that we chose to put in uh, Matt Brash seems like a bad decision. Maybe we were hoping that he would be you know, able to be effective, but he was not effective. He gave up two runs. And that was the end of the game. You know, Logan Gilbert was all right. Three inning, or six innings, three runs from him. So he went toe to toe with the Rangers ace Martin Perez, and he pitched pretty well. But obviously, you know, you still want to see better uh, than that from Marco Gonzal. Or, excuse me, from uh, Logan Gilbert. I feel like Gilbert. You know, I said this last time. I think we've kind of. I've seen enough of Logan Gilbert. I I'm kind of determined that he's not an ace. Um, he just, he doesn't have the stuff to be an ace. He throws the ball really hard. He has a good fastball, um, uh, but his off speed is just not there. He doesn't really throw any good breaking balls. If he can develop his curveball, uh, into being something more effective, he can develop his slider into being something more effective. I, I don't actually know if he throws a curveball, but if he can just add like a really solid third pitch into the mix, then maybe he can, you know, get back into the conversation as a future ace. But right now, you know, unless Marco can, or I keep calling him Marco, but unless Logan Gilbert, uh, can really kind of develop that off speed and 
uh, become more of a two-dimensional pitcher, which, you know, he could do. He's still pretty young. He's only, what, 25, 26 years old. So he could, you know, in the coming couple of seasons, maybe put in some work in the offseason. But right now, at the place that he's at, Logan Gobert is not an ace, and he is not on track to become an ace. He is on track to become a decent middle rotation type of guy. Uh, and probably, yeah, he will probably have an, a career that looks closer to the career of Marco Gonzalez than to the career of a guy like, you know, uh, Felix Hernandez or James Paxton, who we might have been hoping that Logan Gilbert could become. Uh, George Kirby, there's still a chance he could become an ace. Uh, he probably has better stuff than Logan, but he doesn't have the kind of overwhelming, like, uh, throws the ball super hard that Gilbert does. The other thing about Gilbert is, you know, he had a really good command at the start of the season, and that's why, you know, he was... Even without not necessarily having the stuff, um, his command was so on point in the first month of the season that he looked like a one of the best pitchers in the league. Now he's beginning to lose his command. He's been losing his command for the past two months. And in the past two months, Logan Gilbert has been one of the worst pitchers in the American League. So honestly, you know, the fact that we still got a quality start out of him today, and granted it was against Texas, but Texas has a pretty good offense. We got a quality start out of Logan Gilbert. That's good. Um, but yeah, from what I've seen from him, he's not an ace and he's probably never going to be an ace, but that's why, you know, that's why we're trading for guys like Luis Castillo. That's why we're signing Robbie Ray. We kind of already knew after last year, Logan Gilbert was not going to be an ace. The fact that he put up such good numbers at the start of the season this year, that was good. He got lucky. That's pretty much what all the, all the advanced stat guys said. I hold out, held out hope for a while. I thought, you know, maybe the advanced guys were wrong. You know, they seem like they're usually wrong about Marco, but, uh, yeah, M Logan Gilbert, he's fine. Um, he's a mid pitcher. Uh, his numbers will probably continue to go down the rest of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes with an ERA that it ends up above four. It's starting to get close to four now. It's continuing to creep lower and lower. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if Robbie Ray ends up leading our team overall. Or well, it would be Castillo. But I would not be surprised if the ERA leaderboard by the end of the season looks like Castillo one, then Robbie Ray, then Marco, and then. Uh, Gilbert four. Those would be the four guys who are qualified. Obviously, Kirby right now, if he, uh, out of that group, he has the best ERA out of anyone besides Castillo right now, and uh, Chris Flexen has the second best. So I still, you know, I'm a bit confused why we would move Flexen to the pen. I feel like, honestly, using a six-man rotation wouldn't even be the worst thing in the world. Um, you can just kind of continue giving Kirby and Gilbert and Marco those extra days off that they kind of might be needing. But, you know, moving Flexen to the pen... Uh, Hopefully it works out for us. He didn't look very good out of the pen yesterday. He walked like four guys and gave up a run. So hopefully, you know, Flexen can kind of adjust to that role. And and it's probably hard, I can imagine, for a starting pitcher to move to the bullpen because you'd have to be like, starting pitchers have a pregame routine, right? And so to change that routine up, um, I, I, do, I do think that would probably be difficult for him to do. Um, but you got to just hope that Flexen can make that adjustment and be effective out of the bullpen and you got to hope Matt Brash can continue making that, adjust that adjustment as well. Because if Brash and Flexen can be effective members of our bullpen, then you go from a bullpen with, you know, four really good members and two solid members to a bullpen that could potentially have, you know, five or six really, really good members. And, or even if they can just join and become solid. But right now, the core of that bullpen, you look at, you know, Swanson, Seawald, Munoz, and... Uh, and Castillo, I mean, yeah, Castillo, those four, that's one of the best top four in the league. Plus, you got Murphy, who's pitching great. Matt Fest has been a lot better uh, than he was at the start of the season. So, I mean, as a whole, our bullpen has been very good. And if Matt Brash can start being more effective out of it, and if Chris Flexen can be effective out of it, that puts us in the talk for best bullpen in the league, I think. But anyways, um, the starting rotation, yeah, they're going to need to start doing better. Marco's had some rough starts. Gilbert's had some rough starts. Between Marco and Gilbert, I don't know how many good starts that those two have had in the past two months. But Robbie Ray, he's been all right, and Luis Castillo is dominant. That's why we traded for him. We kind of, I think, I guess, Service saw this coming because when we traded for Castillo, our starting rotation was on fire. We had like the third or fourth best starting pitching ERA in the league. But clearly, you know, they saw this coming. They knew there was regression on the way for Marco. They knew there was regression for, uh, for Gilbert. And, uh, and they knew Ray would, you know, I mean, Ray's been fine. He just, he still has a couple of bad starts here, here or there. But for the most part, Robbie Ray has been good ever since May. So, 
hopefully the rotation can continue to get better and improve. We got Castillo on the mound against, I believe it's the Angels first, and I think that's tomorrow. And then we go to Oakland, and then we come home and play Washington Nationals. So we'll be back with the post game for the Oakland game. But for that, uh, that'll be that'll do it for today. Also, uh, Sam Haggerty again, he keeps on hitting. Got another RBI today. I, I'm telling you, Sam Haggerty needs to be in our starting lineup. He should be a, basically an everyday utility player. You can put him at second, left, right. I don't care. Sam Haggerty's a good player. He was two. No, he was one for three today. So his batting average three seventeen. JP Crawford also he had a good game today. Two for four with two runs scored. He's hitting two fifty nine now. So that's really good to see out of him. On the downside, Ty France, Julio Rodriguez, neither of them got a hit. Mitch Hanniger did. So he stays. He keeps hitting well, but. Julio and France, the top of our order, are both of our all-stars. Neither of them got a hit. They are both kind of slumping right now. It's hard to say Julio's slumping, but since his injury, he has not been uh, as good as before. Kirk Casale, he made his Mariners debut today. Um, our new backup catcher, he went 0 for 2. He, uh, he did draw a walk, one strikeout. And uh, unfortunately for Kirk Casale, though, the, the big deal with that was um, he let a pass ball go by that allowed... Uh, a run to score, but that may have been Gilbert's fault. I wasn't actually watching that pitch. I didn't. Uh, I was on listening to that one, that inning on the radio, so I'm not sure if that was necessarily Casale's fault or if that was Gilbert's fault. But something happened with a wild pitch that allowed the Rangers to score a run. And then, uh, yeah, Dylan Moore. He was 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. He walks so many times. It's crazy how mu how good Dylan Moore is at drawing walks. Adam Frazier pinch hits. He goes 0 for 1. Cal Raleigh pinch hit. He goes 0 for 1. So. Overall, not the greatest of games. And then, yeah, Eric Swanson added the bullpen for just one-third of an inning. But uh, the interesting note about that is with his scoreless third of an inning, Eric Swanson's earned run average is now down to a even 1.00, which is pretty cool. Um, he, one more outing like that, and he will be under one. And then Diego Castillo comes in for the final inning and shuts them out with a couple of strikeouts there. But yeah, ultimately, not the greatest day for a pitching staff. Logan Gilbert, six innings pitched, five hits, four walks, five strikeouts. So he continues to walk a lot of guys. He continues to struggle with his control, struggle with his command. His run average, yeah, it's 3.51 now. So he continues to creep that ERA higher. I just remember when it was like 1.2 something. But anyways, that's the look at our team uh, on a game-by-game -game basis. Jesse Winker, he did not see the field today. So he will probably be back tomorrow. But yeah, um, yeah. tomorrow we play at LA. It'll be Luis Castillo on the mound against Shohei Otani. So that will be a great pitching matchup. Probably a uh, low-scoring game. We don't necessarily have to win it, but when you look at the other two games, Robbie Ray against Jose Suarez, that is definitely a win on Tuesday. So um, we don't necessarily have to beat Otani tomorrow as long as we get the wins and the other two games against the Angels. But certainly it would help to beat the Angels. The Angels have been hot lately. Uh, they've been winning a couple games. They're 6-4 in their last 10, so I'm interested to see what happens there. Anyways, I'm Levi. Follow me down on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow the NW Sportscast. Follow the World of Sports. Follow the Mariners Fancast. All the links down in the description. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, it's all in the description below. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.